California Governor Gavin Newsom ordered a massive cleanup of San Francisco ahead of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit set to take place tomorrow, prompting many to question his motivations and the cleanup couldn't have happened and why the cleanup couldn't have happened earlier. Here's how he explained it. I know folks say, oh, they're just cleaning up this place because all those fancy leaders are coming into town. Um, that's true because it's true. But it's also true for months and months and months prior to APEC, we've been having different conversations. Anytime you put on an event, by definition, you know, you, you have people over your house, you're going to clean up the house. You have 21 world leaders, you've got tens of thousands of people coming from all uh, around the globe. Uh, what an opportunity to showcase the world's most extraordinary place, San Francisco. Fox News' White House correspondent Hillary Vaughn pressed the White House's Jake Sullivan about this cleanup, but the national security advisor quickly pivoted, praising Biden. Let's watch. They've moved homeless to other parts of the city, cleared tent cities and trash off the street. Is the president embarrassed that an American city needs to go through a total makeover to be presentable for his out-of-town guests? The president is incredibly proud of the record that the United States will bring as host to this summit. And I went through some of it today. The strongest economic record of any developed country, the lowest unemployment over a sustained period in half a century, far-reaching investments in innovation, in chips, uh, rebuilding America's infrastructure. So actually, the, Joe Biden thinks he is walking into the summit on the front foot and able to showcase the United States as the premier destination for investment. Chinese President Xi Jinping and President Biden will join other world leaders at this summit on Wednesday, signaling that she may be ready to engage with Biden on the strained U.S.-China relationship. So I saw a lot of outrage from conservative media about, uh, well, I mean, outrage, but also begrudging respect for Gavin Newsom admitting that, <laughs> yes, the city was disgusting and we cleaned it up purely for this uh, for this. Um, for this little outing, um, but a lot of frustration, obviously, with the homelessness, crime, and general state yeah, of the city. Newsom should be embarrassed. There are, if you look at the raw numbers, only about um, a little under 8,000 homeless people in the whole city of San Francisco. 8,000 people. That's a, a in, the, in the grand scheme of the big systemic problems in the world, 8,000 people who need homes is one of the more manageable ones. I, and I went to Google that number because I remember from the Bernie campaign that there were only 500. I mean, it's a big number given yes, we're the most sure. wealthy country in the world. But in terms of problem solving, again, only half a million homeless people in the entire country. So I knew it was going to be a relatively small number in San Francisco. San Francisco is also one of the wealthiest cities in the country with the largest concentrations of wealth. How many millionaires would you guess live in San Francisco? I don't know. Um, a couple... That is thousands, tens of thousands. <laughs> what if I told you it was hundreds of thousands? All right, hundreds of thousands. <laughs> um, so it's home to 285,000 millionaires. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's possible. Also, I've seen different estimates here between 63 and 80 odd billionaires. Okay, so there's an interesting question as to why with this tax base that they have, they can't routinely keep the streets clean and routinely find ways to address the addiction problems that exist in the city and the mental health problems that exist in the city and any other root causes of this homelessness uh, and build shelter for what, again, right. is 7,000 odd, a little under uh, 8,000 people. Right. As you point out, it's not a lack of financial resources. They have a very wealthy tax base that they do call on. Um, they're just not building anything or solving any problems. This speaks to just, you know, people, I, I want limited government, but if you're paying for government services, you should get good government services. The quality of the services seems to be very poor. You could, in fact, you could probably just, whatever money is being spent on these services, you could probably just give it to the homeless people and it would improve things better than whatever awful efforts they're making. I mean, we need more housing. We need to make it legal to build housing. California especially has a terrible problem with this, that it's so difficult. You have to fight, you know, historic preservation boards and zoning people, and, and the, the, the neighbors have absolute veto power over every process to build anything new, where you might be able to shelter some of these people. Of course, you also have, um, and I, I've talked to um, uh, people in the uh, mental health and drug addiction um, sector in California who say it, even if you did provide housing, the there's a serious problem with the 
the drug addiction and the mental illness because a lot of the homeless people, um, even if they had somewhere to stay, some of them do have somewhere to stay, but their addiction is so bad that they need to live in a place that's proximate to the person who supplies them with drugs. So they, they have, so they're, they're living out there because they're so addicted. Um, that takes, you know, that takes services. That takes serious drug counseling and mental health interventions. Um, you know, and just shoving those people to some side or putting them under some bridge because China's visiting isn't really solving that no, problem either. No, it's horrible. It's embarrassing. And I am also concerned about what those people are doing in the interim, where they're being housed, you know, what, what could befall them. That's now the government's responsibility because they're the ones carting them around yeah. like chess pieces to make the city look good. I mean, the fundamental problem here, I, I, I completely agree that there needs to be uh, more affordable housing stock. And the reason I agree with that is because I just Googled the average rent in San Francisco. It's $3,300. $336. Now I'm from New York and not much shocks me. Mm -hmm. But this is a scenario in which usually if that's the average rent, you cannot find if I only again have New York as an experience, but it is almost impossible to find a, a studio apartment anywhere in New York for less than $2,000. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a studio here. And so it's not difficult to see it's how It's hard to find a studio apartment for that amount here can in D.C. Hear. as yeah, well. I, I think that that's right. I, I think you could probably live in someone's basement for that amount. No, I did I did during the Bernie campaign live in a studio that was 1950. Yeah, I, right. I mean, that was a few years ago. It's sure. getting, the prices are getting sure. bad. Sure. But that, that's all to say, I mean, there is a, uh, a crisis of housing mm -hmm. in this country. And it is, I think, unconscionable for someone like Gavin Newsom, who apparently has these presidential aspirations, to be openly admitting that he's willing to play shuffleboard with the homeless to avoid embarrassment. But the embarrassment of having one of the wealthiest cities in the world have this kind of a crisis on its doorstep mm -hmm. isn't enough to mobilize in a more permanent way. What do you think about Gavin Newsom, who is often someone touted by, I think, really just by the liberal media or mainstream media as a compelling alternative to Biden because... He has a nice haircut. I'm not sure what else is the selling point, but his name is always out there. I mean, despite, yeah. frankly, I thought a number of scan or mini scandals, at least, that made him sort of unappealing as a national figure. The French laundry yeah. stuff, the COVID stuff mm -hmm. won him absolute. Maybe he's, he's liked by liberals for that reason, but absolutely won him no love among conservatives or kind of COVID skeptic moderate yeah. independent people and also I don't think the left loves him so what is no. his what is the what is the argument for him so remember yesterday when I or over the weekend when I described uh, the golden bachelor as Biden's Patronus oh boy. oh boy I think that Gavin Newsom is like his Cleon do you watch that sci-fi show <laughs> it's like the younger version of him I, I think that mm -hmm. he is when you listen to Gavin Newsom talk he cuts a striking figure. He's extremely articulate. He seems he seems like a, a Mensa candidate compared to what we're used to hearing from Joe Biden and, frankly, a number of other people in Congress. Mm -hmm. He is able to respond on the fly. He does very well in interviews, and he does have a certain degree of charm. And just, I think, by comparison to the rest of the field, he seems just like a reinvigorated, younger, more charming, like super version of Biden. And that's appealing when you're stuck yeah. with Biden and all the poll numbers that we've been reviewing over the course of the day and weeks. Mm. All right, my first uh, my f when I first moved to DC, I lived in an attic of oh, yeah? a of a large like historical mansion or something. I rented part of the attic. I shared it with other people. Thirteen hundred dollars a month, but um, it was a very tiny space. Yeah, and many years ago, apparently. Many, yeah, <laughs> over more than ten years ago. More rising right after this.